And that's it. Thank you very much for, for joining us here at ANU. Um, I just thought uh, we'd start with a couple of questions, particularly around, as you know, the Australian government's released the, uh, the Asian Century White Paper. Yeah. So I suppose I was wondering from the very first perspective is, how does the US see this particular century? From the US perspective, is this an Asian century? Yeah. Well, well thanks for, for having me here, Peter. And um, uh, I don't know that we, we necessarily use a particular word like Asian or Asia-Pacific or Indo-Pacific. I think we're all talking about the same thing, though that there is uh, the, the, the great economic opportunity, the great demographic change, the, uh, the, the, the um, true um, uh, center of gravity for growth in the world is going to be in this region that you know starts on uh, the far end of the Pacific, out in North America and South America, and extends and sweeps across Asia out to the Indian Ocean. And I think that's the, uh, the, the point that we're all, we're all getting at. So we do see that century as a tremendous opportunity. So one of the most important uh, elements of this, of course, from an Australian-US bilateral point of view is the ANZUS Alliance. Yeah. So would you mind just commenting on where you see the future of the, the ANZUS Alliance going in this century? Yeah, well, it's always dangerous to predict the future, uh, but I think there are a couple things we know for sure. One is that uh, the US and Australia are going to remain great mates over the next 60 years. You can just tell from looking at the last 60 years that whatever uh, the challenges were in the world, whatever changes or shifts uh, occurred, we, we have a very resilient, adaptable, evolving alliance. So we're, we're going to stay strong. I think the big challenges will probably have, uh, well, some we won't know, but some we, we do know. We know uh, food, water, energy security for this growing region will be a challenge. You're going to add 1.3 billion people to the middle class. They're, going to want TV sets and they're going to want houses and, and, and um, high input foods and all the other things that middle classes want and that's going to require uh, greater cooperation among us all uh, to, 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 to make sure that uh, those, those needs are met. I think climate change presents a set of challenges for the region uh, across the world but particularly in this region and I think we're also going to have to recognize that cyber is becoming an increasingly important dimension in the world uh, beyond land, sea, air, space, and some of the traditional areas. So I think those will be important parts of our ANSYS Alliance over the next 60 years. And uh, the great thing about the future is uh, there's only so much we can predict about it. There'll be some amazing technological discoveries that will create opportunity and, and new challenges. Yes, and I was just wondering if you uh, had a chance to sort of have a look at some of the key features of the government's Asian, Asian Century White Paper and your, your first impressions. I did. I, I, I read. I read a lot of it, and it's 320 pages. You know, I did the. I did the skim for the United States yeah. first, and then I went back and read the whole thing. But it's a. Uh, it's a very impressive document. I think very thoughtful, um, balanced, nuanced, uh, and and appropriate for the importance of this region. It doesn't try and pick one ideological point of view, but it it looks at all the different opportunities presented here and ways to work together to avoid misunderstanding and to and, and to really maximize the potential of this century. Thank you so much for your time with us. I really appreciate it. No, thank you, Peter.